we already did a couple of our uh, post transcriptional modifications because we had to dress up our messenger RNA before it headed out it it headed outed to the party in the cytoplasm. Guess that's where I should head it outed too. <laughs> so adding the five prime cap and the poly A tail, that's one set of modifications and that just increases stability of the molecule. It also allows the ribosome to know where do I start? And again, I mean, Wendy Land, it makes it so much nicer for me to imagine this cute little guy who's in there making all this stuff happen, but bring it back to reality every now and then. Don't get too close to reality, but every now and then come back and be like, this is chemistry. This is, this happens because molecules interact with each other. They stick together, they form chemical bonds, they release some energy. They break chemical bonds, which uses up some energy, and they reform new chemical bonds. And somebody, some little protein machine, is making all that happen. It, I, I've been doing this a long time, and yet I, my mind is blown on a periodic basis that this is that we are walking chemical reactions. So it's no wonder that chemistry is a required subject before if you are headed into some healthcare route, for example, our nursing program at CR, dude, you better get your chemistry and you better feel good about it because you are chemistry. In addition to your hat and your tail, before you go to the party, you need to have uh, one more thing happens. My little messenger RNA molecule was what, three, seven nucleotides long. Yeah, that is not realistic. The number of nucleotides in a messenger RNA molecule, of course, is going to vary based on how many, uh, pro how many amino acids we need in our protein. And so that makes perfect sense. But in eukaryotes, what's actually transcribed can be thousands and thousands and thousands of nucleotides long. So this pre-messenger RNA can be huge. And then, this is crazy, then the RNA gets cut up. And look at this, exons are the pieces of the RNA that you keep. And I, that's a little bit counterintuitive to me until I think exons exit the nucleus. Introns stay in the nucleus and they're garbage. And we're going to re recycle them and make new messenger RNA with the uh, products. But the exons that exit the nucleus, basically we're going to splice them together. We're going to cut out all these introns and then splice together the exons. And Take a moment to think about all the possible ways we could splice one piece of RNA that came from the DNA molecule. So one gene, here's a piece of DNA, this is a gene, and then we could splice together, we could get rid of that green piece and we have a whole new protein. We could get rid of the red piece and have a whole new protein. We could get rid of the green and the red piece and have a whole new protein. Splicing the exons together gives you a massive amount of diversity in what the number of proteins, the diversity of proteins you can produce from just one gene or from one piece of DNA. It's so cool. All right, you have transcribed messenger RNA. It's doodly dooting can't even remember the sound that I made in the last one, on its way to the cytoplasm to be dealt with in the ribosome. And I actually think I'm going to bust a move and record the lecture on translation right now because translation is like fresh in my brain. And that's what's happening next. Let's talk about how that works. Okay, so I will be back. I don't know if you'll be back because this is actually one separate lecture and I'm going to stop talking once again. Goodbye.